So earlier today, I saw a tweet which showed me that the latest edition of the White Dwarf issue 462, to be exact, is giving away 12 free Warhammer games. Now, these games include Vermintide 2, 40k Space Moon, 40k Dawn of War, Underworlds Online, Warhammer Quest 1 and 2, Talisman, Chaos and Conquest, Titanicus, Dominus, 40k Sanctus Reach, 40k Armageddon Orcs, 40k Space Wolf, and also Warhammer 1 and the Beastmen DLC. Now, obviously, the bit that interests me the most here is the Total War Warhammer stuff, because, you know, it's kind of my whole deal. Now, it definitely makes sense to give away Warhammer 1, because it is still, like, £40 on Steam at the moment, so giving away means that as many people as possible get access to Mortal Empires, and then when Warhammer 3 comes out, as many people as possible have access to Mortal Empires 2, or whatever they want to call it at that point, because that is definitely going to be the most popular game mode. Obviously, the most popular campaigns are Mortal Empires. It's all that I cover on this channel. It's all that most people cover on their channels. So it definitely makes sense to get as many people access to that as you possibly can. Now, it makes sense for Warhammer 1, but why would you then bundle it with what is arguably the worst DLC in Total War Warhammer history? Now, I have a couple of ideas on why they would possibly do this. It is because, obviously, we all know there's a rework coming. The rework for the Beastmen, it has to arrive because otherwise, well, the Beastmen are going to suck forever and that isn't really acceptable. Obviously, the CA wants all of the factions to be at least playable and decent, so it definitely makes sense that there is a rework coming and this lets people get access to that rework of how to buy the prior DLC. Okay, so we know they want to rework the Beastmen just like they did the Wood Elves, but they need money. Obviously, CA is a company, they can't just rework a faction and give it away for free. I mean, that'd be really nice, but would they actually do that? I'm thinking, yes, for some very specific reasons, this is going to go down a huge rabbit hole, so accompany with me, put on your tinfoil hats, because it's going to be a wild one. I've repeatedly said that I seriously doubt CA will do a DLC, DLC, one after the other, so I don't think that the next DLC for Warhammer 2 that we're getting is the Beastmen. It just won't make sense to me. The Twist and Twilight was mediocrely received, so I don't think they'd risk doing a Beastmen DLC to follow up because of the fear that it would be received pretty much the same way. Now, the reason it was mediocrely received is because a lot of the focus went into the rework rather than the new faction. So the way that they could balance this is obviously, you know, put more effort into the new faction, but would that mean that the rework isn't as good? It throws up a whole bunch of problems that I'm not even going to pretend to understand. But the way I see it, there are two distinct possibilities about what could happen and why they're giving away the DLC. So the first of all, I've just mentioned they're making a new Beastman DLC. It's the safest thing for them to do. They make money for that faction, by that faction, making the money, if that makes sense. But it's very, very possible that the next DLC is a Beastman one, and then we get another faction to go against, which I'll come back to in a little bit. And we get a new Legendary Lord, a whole rework, and then obviously some unique mechanics within the new sub-faction that we get. Now, to me, as much as this seems like the safest option to make the money back, I don't think it's what they're going to do. I don't think it's particularly likely, and I also don't think it's very exciting. So that brings us to possibility number two. Now, my second possibility theorem is that we are getting a rework with the Beastmen, but it's not going to be paid for by a Beastmen DLC. It's going to be paid for by a DLC that has so much draw that they are very, very confident that it will make back all the money spent on that DLC, plus all the money spent on the rework. Now, you may be thinking, what faction possibly has that much pull? What faction is so played that they are 100% certain that it will absolutely smash the sales and that everyone will be buying this DLC? The Empire. The Empire is the most popular faction in the game. It has been since Warhammer 1 came out. It is the most popular faction to play in Mortal Empires. It is consistently the most popular faction in Total War Warhammer as a saga, and there is no disputing that fact. So my theory is that our next DLC will feature the Empire. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know about lore and predict who the next Warhammer Lord will be for the Empire. You know, it could be Boris Todbringer. I don't really personally think that's a likely idea because he pairs best with the Beastmen. So if they're going to do that, they may as well release him at the same time as the Beastmen rework. But again, not going to get into that. I don't know anything about law. I just think it's the Empire. As for who it could be in the Empire, I don't know. Don't ask me. Now, before I go guessing of who the opposite side of this DLC will be, who it will be opposing the Empire, I'm going to lay another theory inside this theory on you and uh, things are about to get wild. So I believe that the next Warhammer 2 DLC will be available in Warhammer 3 on launch. And so that means that we get this DLC for Warhammer 2 and it brings in X and Y lords and those lords, or at least one of those lords, will be available to play on Warhammer 3 on launch. And the reason that I think this is very likely is because, well, one, why would they release a DLC and then, like, under six months later, release Warhammer 3. That means that no one will bother to play that DLC. And a lot of people probably won't even bother buying it until they can get the next Mortal Empires, which is, you know, coming in the very late future of Warhammer 3. Also, if I'm right about this, that would mean that the Empire are playable in Warhammer 3 from day one. So I'm the most popular faction in the game being playable at day one in the culmination of this massive trilogy. I just think that that would definitely boost sales. It'd definitely be a smart business decision, if you ask me. 
because it would just have such a massive draw. Everyone would be like, oh my god, I get to play the Empire because I own this DLC. Boom, I'm buying Warhammer 3 and I'm going to play the Empire in Warhammer 3 against the Tides of Chaos. Sounds pretty amazing. Now, as for the other part of the DLC, the most likely one, if you ask me, is it's going to be the Dark Elves. They are the only faction from the Warhammer 2 base factions that don't have six Legendary Lords and six sub-factions. So they're the most likely choice, but let's be honest, they're also the most boring. Now, there have been some theories that it could be Chaos Dwarves that we as the DLC, but I personally don't think that it'd be the Chaos Dwarves versus the Empire. I think the Chaos Dwarves are more likely going to be a pre-order DLC bonus because releasing a whole new faction into Warhammer 2 and then straight into Warhammer 3 would be very, very strange for an entirely new faction. I think it'd be something that they would definitely save for the Warhammer 3 launch, again, to have that massive pull and funnel as many sales of Warhammer 3 as you possibly can. Let's be honest, at the end of the day, CA is a company and the company exists to make money. So if you're going to funnel all the sales, would you rather do it into a game that costs $60 or a DLC that probably costs about $20? Now, the third possibility is it could be the Vampire Counts. Uh, obviously, they are always at odds with the Empire, although they have had a DLC versus Empire in the past. So I doubt that they would do again. Again, this is a very unlikely one. I'm just kind of adding this because I love the Vampire Counts and would love to see more content from them. Also, they got all those new regions added, so you never know. And of course, they are one of the few factions that isn't in the Vortex campaign, so it would be very cool to see them added there. Now, the final possibility, which I believe to be the least likely, is it could be versus the Dwarves. And the reason I think it's the least likely is because the Dwarves and the Empire, while they're not best friends, they do tend to be allies generally for most of the time. Now, if there is a, some sort of Dwarf that is really not friends with the Empire, that isn't a Chaos Dwarf, then, you know, that could be a very likely solution. But again, I don't know Legendary Lords, so to me, this is the least likely of the options. The only reason I'm even putting it on this list is because, well, the Dwarves kind of do need a rework. But apart from that, no, I don't think it's them. Anyway, that concludes my crazy theorizing over this little bit of news. If you like this video and do agree with the theorizing, then be sure to hit that like button. If you did not like this video and have a completely different theory, then dislike this video and leave a comment down below. Tell me your specific theory. In fact, even if you did like this video, leave me a theory down below because I really want to know what everyone thinks about this. This is very new news, I suppose, and uh, I think it could be very interesting. Of course, it could all be for nothing. They could just be giving it away because, you know, keys for the Beastman DLC cost about three pence at the moment because who the hell wants them? Uh, but I'm sure time will tell. Even if none of this is true, and again, they're just giving away these games because they're cheap, um, buy the magazine, man. They're not sponsoring me or anything, but you can get 12 Warhammer-based games for the cost of a single magazine. And most of these games, at least ones that I've played, are pretty damn fun and they are absolute classics. Uh, so you can't really go wrong there. You know, if you're looking to get Mortal Empires or if you're looking to be prepared for the eventual Beastmen rework, whenever that may be, then this is a very good deal for you. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of whatever this was, you know, we do all sorts of strategy game stuff, Warhammer speculation, Warhammer 3, when that comes out, baby, you best believe we're going to be on that, like the Carbonat. Uh, then be sure to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification so that you never miss a single video. That'd be pretty awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I saw you do it. Thank you very much. Love you. But yes, that's all now for me. So for now, I've been Colonel Damnedus. And I will see you next turn.